In this problem, we are given the following mutual inductance right here. We are given the driving source frequency of 4 kilorads per second, and the coefficient of coupling K is adjusted so that our Z A of B is purely resistive. This purely resistive part is going to come in later when we solve this problem. So to start this out, I'm going to use this equation. It can be found in the notes linked below the like button, and we want to find our Z A of B first. Well, to do this, we can just divide both sides by our I of 1. And if we do this, our V of S over I of 1 is going to be our Z A of B. And then we can set this equal to all of these values right here. We need to find our Z1 and Z2. We know our omega, it is this part right here. And then we are actually going to find our M squared. We'll deal with our Z A B, and to deal with it, we are using this purely resistive part that was given to us. So to start writing our impedances, we are going to look at this. We will look at here as well. And lastly, we are going to look at this capacitor. So the two inductors, we know that we can use the formula where we have our ZL equal to the J times our omega C. We're going to get these values for our two inductors. And the impedance for this capacitor is going to be X of C is equal to a negative J over our omega times C. And this is going to give us the impedance of negative 20 with our multiple of j right here. So now when we write out this formula, we are going to combine all the impedances on this side, and that's going to be our z1, and all the impedances on this second side is going to be our z2. So we're going to set our z1 equal to, we have the resistance of 20, and then we have the impedance of j50. So we're just going to add this here. And then for our z2, we have z2 is equal to the resistance of 5 ohms, and then we're going to add our j32 to our negative j20, and this will give us a plus j times 12. So these are the two sub-equations that we're going to plug into this much larger equation here. And we're going to get this as our new equation. So what we're going to do from here is multiply these two together so that we can combine them. And then after this, we know that um, since our ZA of B is purely resistive, that all of our imaginary numbers will equal zero. So what we can do is remove the imaginary number from the bottom. And we can do this by multiplying this by a 5 minus a j times 12 for the numerator and denominator, basically the equivalent of multiplying it by 1. And then if we do this, we're going to get rid of the imaginary number on the bottom. And then we can set all of this equal to 0. And after we do all of that, um, I did it in two steps. This is just multiplying the 5 minus j 12 in. And then this next step, um, I factored these two together. And this is going to be our total new equation. Remember, I said that we only, because of this purely resistive part, want to look at the imaginary numbers. So we are not going to look at the denominator here right now. Um, we are not going to look at this constant. We are not going to look at this constant either, nor are we to look at this constant. We're only going to be looking at the imaginary numbers, which are this value, this value, and this value. And what we can do is rewrite this. And from here, we are just going to cancel out the j's in each of these, and then we are going to solve for our m. And from this, we are going to get that our m is equal to approximately 0 0.0066. This is our m, and to find our k, we are going to plug it into this formula here. So we are going to have it written like this. Our L1, I highlighted as this 12.5 millihenries, and our L2, I highlighted as this 8 millihenries here. So I'm going to have our 12.5 times 8 times 10 to the negative 6 and that's the combination of both of our millihenries and from this we're going to get approximately 0 0.66 as our value now we need to solve for our z a of b for our z a of b we are going to use this formula right here because we've multiplied everything out the only thing that we've changed is that we've set it equal to 0 well, instead of setting this equal to 0, we are not. We're going to set it equal to our z a of b. But this means that we are going to have to reverse a lot of the cancellations that we've done here. So we're going to use the same exact part because the math is the same. We factored and multiplied everything in. The only thing that's changing is that we are now not canceling anything out. So we are going to have to reverse everything that we removed. And now we are going to combine the like terms. So this is a constant, this is our constant, this is also a constant, but this is an imaginary number, this is an imaginary number, and this is an imaginary number. So for our m's, we are going to take the m that we found here, and we are going to plug it into here, 
and we are also going to plug it into here. And if we do that, we are going to get this as our answer. Now, we don't really care about this imaginary number right here, so we aren't going to be looking at it when we do this division. We're only going to be looking at the 6900 divided by the 169. And if we do that, we are going to get approximately 40.8 ohms for our answer. And that is how you would go about solving for this problem.